Hello, 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 everybody. What's going on? Sorry about being a couple minutes late. Hope everyone's doing well. Happy New Year. And we'll just wait for everyone to roll in. Everyone say hello in the chat box. Hello. Happy New Year. All right. And today, today we got a cool webinar, cool mastermind, all about Park Bench, all about how to succeed, how to do well, how to give to your community, how to do these interviews, how to make money from this, how to build your brand from this efficiently and effectively. I'm excited to share. Look at all these people on here right now. This is awesome. 38 people so far. Woo. This is awesome. All right, we're going to get started really quick. I'm just going to make sure if it, can everyone see me? Can everyone see me? So I do, I will have a report to send to people as always. Um, I will have, like I have notes in front of me right now. I will have uh, the replay will get sent out. Okay. But today um, I thought we would just do all webcam today instead of just showing my Word documents. All right. So I'm getting some good feedback that you can see me and that you can hear me nice and clear. I'm getting some good feedback that you can see me and hear me nice and clear. This is awesome. I got to say good morning, everybody. Look at this. Good morning, Irene. Awesome to see you. Sue, Teresa, good morning. Gwen, Vicky, Susan from Kansas. Sudi, that's a new name. Welcome. Johanna, Maya, Charles, what's up? Barb from St. Pete, my cousin lives there. Michael, Chris. All right, I'm not going to maybe say everyone's name. Okay, so um, Linda asked a question, how long will the webinar be? Um, I have a tendency of, of going a bit longer, but I think this one might be shorter. I'm going to take a wild guess and say an hour. Um, I don't ever really get them done in half an hour. The replay is always going to be there. The notes are always going to be there. So if any of you have to leave early, it's 2019 and we want to make it. I hope you want to make it your best year ever. Um, I know I want to make 2019 Park Bench's best year ever. Okay. So, um, let's get right into it. Okay, and I want to I want to start with a question to get everyone to start contributing with some thoughts and some ideas about a really important question to remind ourselves of. And that's this, what business are you really in? What business are you really in? When you think about your goals, when you think about all the things that you are doing, want to do, maybe should do, maybe should stop doing, always bring it back to that original question. So everyone start writing your answers down to that question. What business are you really in? Before we get into goals today and we talk about uh, how to succeed with Park Bench and book interviews and planning and execution and promotion and follow-up and all that fun stuff, what business are you really in? Because the superficial answer is, hey, I help people buy homes. Hey, I help people sell homes. Hey, you know, I have a business that's supposed to make money and profit. Hey, you know, even, even the people business is getting closer Okay, the people business is getting closer to maybe some really thought-provoking answers that get at the root of where your mind should be at, where your um, your value sh should be at, if you want to make this 2019 your best year ever. Because I could say that, hey, Park Bench is in the business of making neighborhood websites, 
and helping realtors uh, make money. But the business I'm really in is helping local professionals be happy, healthy, and wealthy. That's what I feel I'm in the business in. So what are you really in the business in? Because if you start thinking about the people, if you start thinking about how do you want homeowners to feel, how do you want the people in your community to feel about you and about your business, what are you doing for their life above and beyond the real estate side? Because if you can solve a bigger problem for the people in your community, if you can solve a bigger problem for your community, you will get paid much bigger than if you solve the small problem of helping someone buy a home and helping someone sell a home. If you think that you're in the business of helping your neighborhood grow, if you think you're in the business of helping people maximize their life in their community, if you think you're in the business of improving the economy and improving small business, in your community, I think not only will you maybe get more energized consistently throughout the year because solving big problems is a ton of fun, but I think you'll then start to act in ways that will make 2019 your best year ever. All right. Great answers, everybody. I'm just reading them up on another screen and I'm going to put a report together to compile all these answers for everybody. Now, here's my next question I want to ask everybody, because we also want to get rooted in this answer. When we think about our business for 2019, we got to remember, where have you got clients in the past? Answer that question in the chat box. Where have you got clients in the past? Where's the major sources for your clients and for your referrals where are they coming from where have they come from look at the data look at the history okay and if you're able to put some numbers okay hands to people who can put statistics who can actually know the numbers as a business owner, you, re you really should know the numbers. I'm doing a really good exercise right now with my team of going even deeper to knowing where we are finding the right, not only where are we finding clients, where are we finding the right ones? Because you guys, being so engaged and coming on these masterminds, you're the people that we want to work with. The people who are out who are actually doing the interviews, okay? There's always two camps of people at Park Bench, those who do the work and those who don't. We want to work with the people who do the work and who are valuable members of our community, like you all. And so we, I want to reverse engineer and go, how did I find Chris? How did I find Irene? How did I find Debbie and John, right? I want to know this even clients. When you think about your ideal clients, where have you got them in the past? Write that in the chat box. Think about that question. Because again, reflecting on that constantly will help you invest your time and money this year in the right places and help you maybe stop doing some things that aren't working so well or aren't going to help you as much as you want in order to make 2019 your best year ever. All right. Thank you, everyone, for your answers so far. This is awesome. Okay. And what Karen talked about used to be Zillow. Okay. And now it's almost all referrals. The If you were with us on the trends mastermind, the data around lead generation contributing to, to transactions is just... And, and, and I, I hate the word lead generation because it's just the definition so all over the place. I actually heard this really good one the other day called lead receiving versus lead generation. I always go lead generation versus lead creation. But lead receiving 
is paying money to receive leads like in Zillow or Trulia, Realtor.com.ca, so forth. Lead generation, lead creation is where you are out there with your database, with your sphere of influence, when you're out in your community, when you're following up with your past clients in your sphere, that is how you create business, all right, and create leads, okay? And in the past, those platforms did a whole lot better. And that's just because lead, lead creation online, lead online leads and lead generation, lead receiving, whatever you want to call it, was new. And think about how many people put in junk emails and junk addresses and junk phone numbers and how many people find, just bounce off a website as soon as they see a web form. I know I do. Okay. So, um, Really understanding where you are recently getting your clients versus maybe three, five, ten years ago is really important. And thank you to everybody who's writing information, writing uh, answers in here that benefit the community. All right. When people put their numbers in, when you guys are transparent with each other, we're all getting smarter, we're all getting better, um, and it encourages more people to be transparent. Okay, because fortunately, we're not competing with each other. So we really got to get used to being transparent in these masterminds for 2019. All right. And contributing even more. All right. And the, and our, our crowdsourcing of knowledge will help us tremendously. All right. Now, next, I want to talk about goals. Okay. So before we talk about lead list creation and booking interviews and planning and preparation, execution and promotion and follow up and some advanced techniques and some Q&A at the end. Okay, so any questions you guys have, um, I'll have a Q&A at the end. Um, and then if you don't get something answered, you can always call in or email in um, if you have to leave early. All right, but let's talk about goals. Okay, so I want you to start briefly thinking about your goals with Park Bench for 2019. Okay. And I want you to clump, all right. I want you to group or chunk, all right, your goals into three categories. One is the critical numbers. Okay. So critical numbers is for sure clients, referrals. Okay. And you might want to talk about volume or sales growth or because, yes, we are doing something positive for the community, but a metric is the success of our business because we know they are in direct relation. The more we give, the more our relationship is. And this is where the second number is smart numbers. So interviews booked, interviews completed, subscribers to your website, database growth, relationships built, okay? Volume, I don't know where you put that one. Average home price you work with, where do, where do you put that one? Your commissions, where do you put that? But how many people are you serving? How many buyers are you serving? How many sellers are you serving? How many listing presentations? How many buyers meetings? Some are critical and some are smart. Okay, and the smart ones mean that if those numbers are going up, the critical numbers you can have faith in will go up as well. And that third metric group is the vanity metric. Okay, and so I want you to start grouping which, what are vanity metrics, what are smart metrics, and what are critical metrics. Because traffic to your website brand impressions, social media fans and followers, in my opinion, are vanity metrics. It's not that I don't want them. It's not that I don't value them, but I don't want to get sucked into caring about those metrics. Because if I focus on the other stuff, that stuff will get sorted out. If I focus on booking interviews, if I focus on completing them, if I focus on follow-up, if I focus on relationships, if I focus on working with people, I will have more traffic to the website. I will get more brand exposure. I will get more fans and friends on social media. But when you think about my, when I think about my equation, 
okay, for, hey, the majority of my business is relationship and referral. The majority of my business, I want to be through relationship and referral. Those metrics aren't really in the formula. Okay, so write down all your major goals right now, okay, and group them into which ones are critical, which ones are smart, and then which ones are kind of the vanity ones. Okay, videos. How many videos do I create? Okay, I probably wouldn't put that in critical. I put that in smart because you definitely want to do more video. You definitely want to create more content. It's good for short and long term of, for your business. Okay, but I don't want to go too deep into goals. I just wanted to ask you those questions of re categorize your goals into which ones are critical, which these are the most important for your happiness, for your health, and for your wealth. These are the most important for your family, for your future, and for your, your business as a whole. Smart numbers are the ones that you, you care about. You want them to improve. And you know that if you work on those numbers, the critical ones will almost get will will deal with themselves because those critical numbers of you know serving more buyers serving more sellers it's sometimes hard to focus on those on a daily basis because you don't quite know where they're going to come from okay but if you focus on the smart numbers which is hey if i focus on talking to new people every day talking to following up with my database booking more interviews doing more interviews um doing more prospect phone calls creating more content if I focus on these numbers, those ones will take care of themselves. And the vanity metrics I care about, I want to track, they're important to me, but I actually won't focus on them. I'll just let them take care of myself themselves as well. All right, so what you will find is that you'll be living with and focusing on the smart numbers and the critical numbers and the vanity metrics will take care of themselves. Okay, so... Think about your goals again if you've already done the business planning. I mean, we've had masterminds in the past. Um, so if you, maybe what I'll do, I'll make a note here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure I send all the masterminds from 2018 out. And I'll make like a PDF package that we can always just send out to people, especially new people who come on board. So 2018 masterminds, links. Okay, so if you didn't, if you missed any of the masterminds from last year, where we went even deeper into goals and deeper into business planning and business execution, um, I'll send that out after the webinar. Okay, but I really wanted to today talk about Park Bench. All right, because we, we I'm, I'm not going to do it that much. Um, as you know, these masterminds are very much uh, a higher level strategy for business and skill development for business and mindset and motivation and just really big picture, right? I want to help you be successful in your business. And I know Park Bench is a piece of it um, and hopefully a bigger piece over time, but I know it's a piece of it and I want to work, I want us together to work on the whole thing, but I definitely want to have a whole thing on Park Bench today. All right, so step number one, okay, the lead list, okay? Who are you going to interview? Who are you going to get to subscribe to the website? Who are you going to get to use the website? And I want to start with this question. So everyone get ready to start typing in the chat box and answer this question right now for everyone in the group. Crowdsource this information. This is going to be a really great question to help everyone create their lead list. Who has given you referrals in the past? Who, it could be business owners, could be professionals, could be past clients, let's just say everyone, okay? Everyone has past clients or further business. Friends, family, FISBOs, nonprofits, community leaders. Who has given you referrals in the past? Mortgage brokers, painters, contractors, personal trainers, hairstylists. Who has given you referrals in the past? Everyone write down all the major people that have done it or the best ones. If you have a special referral generator that gives you tons of referrals, let everyone know. Who is that amazing person in your life? 
who refers you tons of business because maybe some of the realtors who are newer into the business or newer into building a business through relationships and referrals, we can all start learning from each other of who we should start spending more time with because success leaves clues. All right, success leaves clues. So everyone in the chat box, everyone's got to give more to their mothers. That's a great one. Okay, everyone in the chat box, write down who has given you referrals in the past. Okay, because when you're building your lead list, here is my recommendations of how you should go about this. First and foremost, everyone is on a spectrum of likely to use you and likely to refer you from not likely to very likely. And past clients, people who have referred you already, they're at the end. Keep giving value to them. People are creatures of habit. If you've referred once, you will refer twice. I am an amazing customer. I refer tons of business. I am just a brand whore, you know, part of my language. But I just love promoting brands that I love. I love promoting people and products and services that I love that I think can help other people out. Okay. Um, so I always start with the people at the far end of the spectrum first. How can I give them more value? How can I interview them? How can I tell them about the website? Hey, John, do you have you heard about the new website for the community? No, Grant. Like, I want to show it to you. It's got local news, local events, local deals. I'm getting, I'm doing interviews and I'm featuring people on the website. Hey, do you have a product or service? Do you want to promote? Hey, I know you have a business, you know, and I'm looking for people to interview and feature on the website. It's all for free and you're my friend, so I'd love to help you out. Do you want to be interviewed and featured? It'll be fun. Okay, I am going to the people who have already referred me in the past. I'm going to the people who I believe are very likely to use me and refer me, and I'm going to try and add more value to them. So look in your database when you create your lead list first. That's your first priority. Number two, okay, if I have a really good relationship with this person, if I have a very strong relationship with a person, they're, again, likely to use me and refer me. They maybe haven't in the past, but I believe they may. They may use me. They may refer me, and I want to add them more value because if I go talk to a business owner I've never met before and they have no idea who I am, I can definitely turn them into a person who uses me and refer me, but that's going to take some work. And, hey, entrepreneurs are lazy, okay? We, we are looking for shortcuts. We are looking for the low-hanging fruit, okay? We're looking to, to, to get the best bang for our effort because there's so much stuff we got to do every day, all right? Who's with me? Okay, so I am going to people I have high relationship strength with first, okay? I'm going through my database, and I'll talk later. I'll bring up later a, a prospecting tactic that you guys can use that allow you to reach out to everybody in your database, even if they don't want to be interviewed, even if they don't want to subscribe to your website, a great prospecting tactic to help you reconnect with people and develop your brand as someone who is community-minded, relationship-based, and of a higher um, position or status than maybe realtors who just spam people and are salesy and cheesy. Okay. Then after I do the high relationship strength, I am going to go after your list right there. All right. The list that you guys created, I'm going to go after the people who I may not know, but they have a history of referring business to me or people in my industry. Because that is also the low hanging fruit. I'm going to want to interview and get to know the people who have a history of using and referring people in my industry's business, in your business, okay? Number three, I'm going to take a look at all my hobbies and interests and past work experiences, and I'm going to go after them because I will like them. I will like meeting them. I will like interviewing them. We'll naturally just get along, right? If I 
talk to someone. I'm in health, right? I like health and fitness and nutrition and, and, and activeness and activities. So if I just start interviewing people who are in that space, we're not actually going to get along. And if we naturally get along, you're more likely to do business with them and they're more likely to refer you than a, a person who isn't like that. All right. You've got to look at yourself as a human and think about all the thing, all the people that you will connect with that maybe your other realtor competition won't. All right. So I'm going to go after people in that order. Also, when we talk about um, at Park Bench who you can interview, the rule of thumb is you can interview anybody who serves your community. So the local professionals, and you're talking about the, the lawyers, the accountants, the dog walkers, the personal trainers, the, the contractors of all those different kinds, home service professionals of all kinds, they usually service a very large area. They may not even have an office. And so you are allowed, okay, to interview anyone who serves your market? Because if you ask a painter who may live in the neighborhood next door or two neighborhoods over, hey, I'm the sponsor of this neighborhood website. Would you like to be interviewed? If that person serves that community, which they probably do, they're going to nod their head and say yes. So you are allowed to do that. However, I would prioritize the people who have physical locations in your community first before you start branching out to other areas, okay? And if there's a, a realtor next door who's a part of Park Bench, you guys are doing it together and you both want to interview the same person, go for it. It does not matter. PR, good, free PR is good in, in, in plentiful quantities. No business owner says, oh, no, I've always, I was already interviewed. I don't want to be interviewed again. All right. The business owners want to be interviewed many times over, even if it's the exact same questions. I myself have been interviewed many times over and I'm answering the same questions every single time. Okay. So don't worry about that. If rare, it's, I think it's happened like once or twice in five years where two realtors wanted to interview the same person. I just said, go do both of it. Go both of you go do it. Um, if you really want to, okay? But that's how you think about it. First, focus in your, in your area. Then you can branch out if you, if you need or want to, okay? But I think there's usually an abundance of people to interview in your area. And the one that I want to challenge a lot of people, I'm going to actually have a challenge um, coming out at some point with Fizbos, okay? Not only when you look at the market, are for sale by owners, privates, if you call them that, or uh, expireds on the rise, okay? Th the trick that we have, the value that you can give to FISBOs to interview them, to feature them, to feature their property on the site, to interview them, fe an interview and feature that interview on the website to, to help them try and sell their home, knowing that statistically you'll probably end up getting the business. If you want to get more listing presentations, you want to get more sellers, if you want to get more clients, if you want to make more money, I challenge you. I encourage you, go after the for sale by owners. Okay? Interview them, feature them, give value to them first, build a relationship with them, and just let the statistics go to work. Okay. The next section I want to talk about, if there's any questions, I'll look up at the chat box right now. If there's any questions about who to interview or how to build a lead list or where to build a lead list, put that in the chat box right now. If you don't have a CRM, say I don't have a CRM. I don't have a place to record all the people that I want to interview so I can track my progress to booking the interviews. If you don't have a spreadsheet, Google Sheets, CRM to do that, say, say I don't have that in the chat box and I'll send you our 
interview booking tracker where you can put your lead list in and then just start chipping away at it over time. And it will keep you organized, keep you efficient and help you learn how many calls, emails, texts, social media direct messages do you need to do in order to book the number of interviews you want to book. Okay, so if you don't have a CRM, if you uh, don't have a tracker um, to help you be efficient and to put your lead list in to book interviews, um, say so in the chat box. Okay. Do we have scripts that have been successful with Fizbo's? Yes, we do. So if you'd like the Fizbo Park Bench Fizbo freaking the key that unlocks Fizbo's using Park Bench. If you want that, put that in the chat box. Say, I want the Fizbo key. Okay, and I'll I'll send that to you as well. It is just unbelievable. Okay, and 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 if you and if when I say Fizbo, you're like, oh, like I don't like Fizbo's. Like I get it. Because the the past scripts and the past methods for going after them was very salesy and cheesy and pushy. Like you had to you had to be a salesperson with no shame and you know just go after it. And it, it's fine. Like the systems out there work. But if but if you have that cringe when you hear about going after Fizbos and expireds, there is no cringe in our system. It is so much fun. It is so easy. It's so pleasant. Uh, they love you. They they love talking to realtors when they're a park bench realtor. It's unbelievable. Okay, but let's talk about, let me see if there's any other questions. Okay, let's talk about how to book interviews. Okay. I have heard that some you know, when I hear from this, the client success team, like how people are booking interviews, you know, everyone's like, oh, you know, this realtor found this way to book a lot of interviews through Facebook or through Instagram or through email. Um, and we we train on that. So it's no, it's no weird reason why that happened. But it, I find, and I know a best practice for making, building your business and making money and, and getting an ROI from this. The dominant way that you book interviews should be done in person or over the phone. First, you should do it. I know some people try to get other people to do it. There are so many stories of people who have got clients or got leads or got referrals when they book the interview, let alone doing it and following up and all the promotion after and all that stuff. Booking an interview, you will, if you do it properly and you do it enough times, you should be getting a client or a lead or a referral in the booking interview process, especially if you do it in person or over the phone. And the reason is you're in dialogue. Okay, you're in dialogue when you're in person over the phone. Like the person's not going to hang up on you that easily. It's not like a, a Facebook or an email that where you send a message and then, then you just wait and the person can just respond and then just send it and then be done with it. Right? When you're in person over the phone, it's like you're talking now. And when you're talking, people start asking questions. And when people start asking questions, it starts leading them down this path of finding out who you are, what you do, why you're doing it. They start liking you, trusting you. And if they have a need, or if their friend or family has a need, or if their staff member has a need, which we have seen many times, the staff members need to buy and sell, the friends and family need to buy and sell, or that person they're booking an interview with needs to buy or sell. And that's why you want to book interviews in person or over the phone. The script's really simple. Hey, my name is Grant. I'm a sponsor and ambassador of this new local website for Liberty Village, and I would love to get to know you and feature you on it for free. Do you want to be featured? Right? Not that fast. Okay? But, but that is the script. It's really that simple. You can fluff it up a little bit. Okay, and talk about it. Hey, I'm a sponsor and ambassador of this local website. It's all about shopping local and keeping people up to date with what's going on in the community. And as the ambassador, I'm looking to interview cool business owners and feature them on the free. Would you like to be featured? 
Okay. Um, so you can fluff it up, but keep it short, keep it concise. Okay. And let's put a question in the chat box right now. What are your best practices for those people who are, who have done interviews, who have booked them, who have got results, who are having success, who can share some knowledge, who can share some insight. What are your best practices for how to book interviews? What are your best practices for how to book interviews? And what I'll do, um, remember the online course, I go through that script a whole lot slower and I write it out, okay? Everyone has access to the online course, right? Okay, um, so I'll, I'll just make sure to send links and info about the script, okay? Because we got lots to cover, I wanna move on. But everyone else, what are your best practices for booking interviews? Because if you're a true master when you can teach it, okay? So right now, if you think you can teach it, write that in the chat box and I'll put everyone's tips and tricks into the chat box. Martha, Martha is the queen of networking groups. If that's Martha Vasquez. She's had lots of success with her chambers and networking groups. Okay, next, all right, planning and preparation, all right? So you book the interview, and now before you do it, you want to plan and prepare. Okay, so you got to think about hardware. Okay, what's the hardware that you need to bring to the meeting. If you're doing video, what are you bringing for audio, microphones? What are you bringing for camera? What are you bringing for stabilizing, for tripods? Are you bringing lighting? You know, you can go on Amazon, you can get these really tall, thin uh, lights that you can just portably pack up and bring um, and have in your trunk if need be. Okay, just for some extra lighting, just in case. You can have like two. Just get two stand-up little lights, um, and they can they can compress and go in your trunk. And if you need better lighting, you can, you can have that there. Okay, but you need hardware, equipment, all right, for your interviews. If you're doing video, if you're doing writing, make sure don't forget this stuff. Okay, don't forget a pen and paper. Okay. If you're doing a podcast, okay, podcasts are on the rise. I'm going to make a really big push, and I'm going to really challenge people this year to do a podcast, and I'm going to come out with a whole course on how to do it, okay, um, because I had to go through – I, I spent a bunch of you know money learning from people who had ranked uh, in the top 10 how to do this. And I'm going to give you guys all that information for free. Okay, I'm going to teach you how to do it. Um, and I really want to encourage people to do it because it's really easy. You just press record on your phone. Okay, I'm doing the interview with someone. I'm taking notes on my pad and paper. And I got to film all at the same time. Okay, and at the end of the interview, okay, I'm going to stop that video. Okay, I'm going to have a long, raw footage. And I'm going to take my phone and then I'm going to do a short little one, two minute hype video for Facebook that doesn't require any editing because it's just go. Okay. And I'm going to make sure I have a microphone that goes into my phone. Okay. And all this stuff is like 25, 50, you know, 75 bucks. Okay. Which, hey, if you're committed to being great, okay, this is one, it's a write off and two, you know, it depreciates over time. It's, it's totally worth it, okay? I want to challenge everyone to create all forms, all right, of content this year. Number two, software, okay? Do you have video editing software? Do you know how to use it? Do you have software if you're doing a podcast? Do you have a CRM? Do you have your own personal website? I know some people don't. Is there anyone who does not have a personal website? Or anyone want to improve their website? Say yes in the chat box. Say yes to website. All right. 
Social media, do you have the tools to quickly and easily manage your social media so that you can get the posts out? Okay, you gotta think about some of these software tools that you may need. Now, who here has a question about hardware or software that uh, a question of if they should buy something, if they should invest in something? Because another thing that I wanna get better at is I want our group to get better at using each other to provide help and advice and a sounding board of whether or not you should invest in something, okay? Because there's lots of things to buy and we can end up wasting our money on things that we don't really need or use, okay? So if anyone has any questions about whether to buy something, okay, I'll try to answer that now or maybe at the end. All right, so when it comes to planning and preparation, you need to make sure you have all this stuff ready beforehand. Then, okay, you've got to confirm with the person you're, you've booked an interview with. Okay, don't forget to do this. Always send an email and a text after you've booked it to confirm it. Create the calendar event and send an email and a text to remind, to confirm the appointment with the person. And then the day of, send a text reminder to that person, okay? You wanna get on a texting basis with everybody. That's the goal in today's communication world is I wanna get your cell phone and I wanna be on a texting basis with you, okay? And finally, especially if you're new to this, okay? Every great person who is great at doing interviews, great at booking interviews, they role play. Okay, they visualize and they role play. Okay, so do it. Don't expect to be great at the beginning. If this is the first time you've ever got out in the community and done interviews, let, let's, because let's, I bet you there's some here. In the chat box right here, if you had some fears, doubts, and worries, okay, when you first got started and now they're gone, okay, put that in the chat box. All right, so that the people who have those fears, doubts, and worries at the moment don't feel like they're on some island and they're some weirdo, okay? Everyone, before you can be great at anything, you gotta be good, and before you can be good, you gotta be bad. And then there's even a moment before you're bad that you really suck at something, okay? So if this is brand new to you, don't worry about it, that's okay. That's also why you start doing the interviews with the people that you have the best relationship with, because you can, fumble and bumble and kind of fuck shit up with them, okay? So don't worry about that. And if people can can give some insight into how th their mindset and their confidence and their comfort has changed over time, um, put that in the chat box, okay? Uh, because I think I think what's cool is that uh, is is who here has a ton of fun, okay? If you've done interviews and you think they're so much fun, Okay, put that in the chat box. If you think interviews are so much fun and you feel good, all right, put that in the chat box because I think that's one of the best things about what we're all doing is we're doing something positive, we're doing something good, and it's great for our business, but it also makes us and that person feel good, right? Like making the print campaign is not fun, you know, like, being a slave to your phone when the leads come in, that's not all that fun, especially if you're really busy with something. I think these are fun. All right, so if you're with me, write that in the chat box and let everyone know how you feel. All right, because it's, it's and everyone spend the time and there's a lot of great stuff coming in. Um, thank you, Chris, Debbie, John, Susie, Teresa, Denise, Cindy, Irene, Martha, you guys are awesome, all right? Thank you, everyone, for contributing today. And I apologize if I didn't say your name. Everyone's doing awesome today. I recommend you guys read everyone's stuff because, again, like it just helps you go through this process comfortably, confidently, and excited, even when you kind of mess up sometimes. And, it, and you will mess up, but that's okay. Don't chase perfection. Chase connection, okay? And that's a guiding light for everybody. All right, so 
If there's any questions about the planning and the preparation phase, all right, it's not supposed to be that complex, but you got to make sure you got the hardware, the equipment. You got to make sure you have the software equipment. You got to make sure you do the communication to confirm and to remind. You got to role play, all right, and then you got to go, all right. And so now I want to talk a little bit about execution. Okay, and, and some stuff I have seen that I want to help remind people. There will, be, there will be a feeling, I've experienced this, okay, and if, everyone, and if anyone can relate to this once I say this, let everyone know. You will, have a, you will likely have a thought or a feeling to, you know, write a little bit less, to make your video a little bit shorter, to make your interview a little bit shorter, to find a way to get things done a little bit more quickly. Right? Whatever format you're doing, you will likely have the feeling of like, oh, I just want to get this done. Okay, oh, I don't, I don't want this to be take too long. And, and I do see some realtors cutting corners. And there's even people teaching it, not at Park Bench, um, but in the industry when people talk about getting out in the community and creating content. I see people already talking about trying to cut corners and make things really short. And what I have found when I did this and when I made money from this is the people valued your time. The people valued my time. The people valued my effort. And so when they could see a product where they were like, wow, you really put effort into writing this and you took so many photos and you put it in there and you like learned how to do a podcast. I don't even know how to do a podcast. And you did like a long form video and a short, you and you promoted it on social media and all these different places and you sent me emails and you were so professional and like this was not just a willy nilly like you came by and you did a short little video and you put it on your Facebook and you press share and you told me to share it. Like you put effort okay, into doing this thing for me. That's what they're thinking. What moves the needle in turning a relationship into one where they want to use you and refer you is where, they're, where they genuinely are like, I want to reciprocate. I, I am so thankful. I am so grateful. I am so appreciative. Okay. Um. And, and so I just when you think about executing this, before I answer some of the questions I just saw, think about how can I show this person? All that should go through your head when you do this is how can I show this person I care about them? How can I show this person that I'm willing to put in time and effort to help them? That I'm a true professional and I do things right. How can I show them that? And the more you think about how can I help this person, how can I serve this person, how can I show them that I actually care because there's other realtors going out in communities now doing content, but they're cutting corners. I want to show them that I'm actually trying to do something right and something useful for them. And when you think about that, it will make the I want to get this done really quickly subside because hopefully you value value. You value giving value. You value being excellent. You value professionalism. You value showing people that you care above getting things done really quickly. I got results really quickly from this when I did this. And my website sucked compared to what you guys have. It, everything sucked compared to what you guys have. And the reason why business owners referred me lots of business, became my clients, and I became the guy in my area in three months very quickly very quickly I worked my face off I worked really hard I put a lot of time into doing this right I put a lot of time into doing this right okay um, so uh, that that is my big thought for execution to leave you with let me just answer some of these questions. Can we get a mastermind Facebook page? Okay. 
would you rather a mastermind Facebook page or just do all this on the local leaders Facebook page? So we have the local leaders Facebook page, so we can we can do everything on there. I don't want to divide up the, you know, have too many. I don't like having too many pages. I like just having one central one. Just I'm lazy, so I don't like <laughs> managing multiple pages. Plus, it it gets you know it's easier to get more people because there's already hundreds of people in another page, so it's easier to get engagement. Um, if you guys all really want it, I will do it. But I think that because everyone's already on the local leaders Facebook page, that that if we just do everything there, oh, you're new, okay, oh, you need to get added to it. Everyone tell Janet how awesome the Facebook page is, and what cool stuff. Actually, say this: what cool stuff? What value have you got from the Facebook page? Tell Janet what value have you got from the Facebook page so she can get excited for that page. Um, okay, and, and again, every, guys, I'm loving everyone's feedback today. I will be going through all of it and I'll be creating an amazing report. Um, and I probably, it sounds like I have lots of work to do. Top 10 things we should buy and have. Yep, okay, I can do that. Now, back to execution. Here are some other best practices that I, again, find people sometimes miss the boat with a little bit. First, okay, you've got to plant the seed for doing business, okay? It's, and it's not salesy, it's not cheesy, it's not pushy when you're asking them if they have any questions about the market. If they have questions about how to buy, how to sell, how to invest. Okay, you do the interview, and then before you wrap up and do the photos and the, and talk about deals, and you say goodbye, hey, before I wrap up, as you know, I'm a local realtor in the area, or I don't even know if you know I'm a local realtor in the area. Um, do you have any questions about the market before we wrap up while I'm here? I'm always happy to share my knowledge and share some insights, and people usually ask me that question anyway. So do you have any questions about the market? And then if they do, Okay, a lot will do, lot will, will won't, but that's okay. At least you asked. And when you do, you can now start having a conversation about real estate for a bit, and then you can actually go you know, go have a follow up meeting where you just talk about real estate because you're you're there to interview them, you're there to give value to them, but you want to plant a seed that hey, I can help you, and I like helping you. I like answering your questions. I like being your trusted advisor. And if you need something right now, I am here for you. You want to do that in the interviews. Do not forget to do that. Some people are forgetting to do that and they're making excuses, otherwise known as justifications. They're making reasons as to why they shouldn't do that or don't need to do that. And when you know you're coming from a place of I'm trying to actually just add more value and answer questions that you have, and if you don't have any questions, I'll leave it at that and we'll just continue on with the interview because I want to help you in that way too. Then it's your duty to ask the question. If you are truly a service-based professional, it's your duty to ask them if they have any questions about the market or else you're not fulfilling your true role as a service professional. Okay, that's my two cents on it. All right. Yes, there's a replay, Dave. Okay. Final two things. In the wrap-up phase, when you wrap up the interview, take photos. Okay? That's what these things are for. Take photos. Okay? Take lots of photos. Get a photo with the person. Get a photo with the person, even if it's a selfie. That's okay. Okay? Selfies are the thing. All right, that is a sign that you are a real person, they're a real person, and you have a real relationship because you took a selfie together. And don't you want to tell the world that you have a real relationship with this person? That's not some fake thing. Okay, so if you, if you need to do a selfie, go do a selfie. But get photos to put it in, in your article. Even if you do video, take photos and put the photos in the interview. Okay, and the second thing, and this is the advanced stuff, which I go much deeper in in the online course. Okay, get deals. If, if you want to talk about true leverage, okay, 
getting business owners to use the website because they're offering deals to new customers. They're offering rewards for reviews. They're putting up their daily specials. They're putting up their in-store sales and they're handing out cards to encourage people to go check out their profile and write reviews and get their deals because that what is what makes them money. I made a lot of businesses in my neighborhood money because I pushed them to get deals on the site. It it is a skill. Getting deals on the site is a skill. You're all salespeople. I'm a salesperson. It's free for them. It helps them make money. It's it's an easy sell, but you still got to sell it. People underestimate the fact that they have to sell it. They have to make the person want to put up deals. They almost have to nudge and sometimes really hardly nudge that person to put deals up on the site because you know it's in their best interests. And people resist change. And that's what you're trying to fight, change. That's why people just don't want to put up, hey, do you want to put up a new customer coupon? Oh, that's a great idea. Let me think about it. No, I know. You should absolutely think about what deal to put up. Um, I don't know if you know, it's free. Okay. And so if it's free and we don't take any of your money, the amount of days that, because I'm promoting your profile after this, right? And I'm promoting your interview. So people are going to the site. People are going to check out your profile. So if people go check out your profile and there's no deals up there, then, you, then you're missing out on revenue. And so you can log in later. You can change your deal whenever you want. And you can actually learn which deals are better than others. But if you don't put up a deal now, you're actually going to miss out on revenue. And the businesses who put up deals right away, they make more money, especially because we're not taking any money. Okay, so let's try, let's put something up. Like, give me a deal. Give me a deal. Yeah, no, I, 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 yeah. How about, how about, I know you want to think about it. How about 25% off? Are you still making money on that? Because worst case scenario is 100 people get this deal they come in your store, they get this discount, you're still making money, and then you go, wow, I didn't need to give that big of a discount, let me just give you know, 10% off. All right, worst case scenario, you're making money. All right, don't put up a deal where you're not making money, okay, because that's not the point of business. Put up a deal to encourage people to come check you out or encourage people to write a review, but make money. Still make money, make sure the margins still work. All right, so, Give me something. What do you got? How about 10%? How about 15%? And you just you just got to keep going and going and going and going. Okay? All right? You've got to push for deals. It, it This will help you dominate your market. Truly. Truly, truly, truly dominate. Okay? Now, Patty brings up a, a, a point. This is what business owners say. Oh, I don't want to manage another page. Oh, I know, eh? Managing like other platforms that come out where you got to do a lot on it, I know is a real pain. That's why the Park Bench built it so that you just tell me what deals you want to offer. I'll just put it up on the website and you never have to look at the thing ever again. You can just let it just be up there and let it make you more money for free. You can truly set it. I'll, I'll, I'll help you set it up for you because I'll get Darren, right? I'll just get the deals and I'll just tell Darren support to go do it. But I'll just give it to me. I'll get it done, right? And then you just set it and forget it, right? So you don't have to maintain anything. You'll just get notified. You'll just get an email of like, ping, new customer. Ping more new review. You don't have to do anything. Park bench built it, so you don't have to do anything. Okay. So again, that that is a complaint. Okay. We're we're in salespeople. That's a complaint. Okay. Or a mild objection. Okay. And so you just got to deal with it, right? You just got to handle it. You just got to know your scripts. You got to role play. You got to come up with the answers. Okay. I personally, I personally have got over, I know it's over 100, it might be over 200 businesses, personally, to put up deals on the site in the span of about six months. 
I got a lot of business to go on the site. I, I, yeah, Danforth, Liberty. I, I really should get the numbers on it. Businesses do this. They say excuses. They complain. They want to think about it. And then when they do it, they're happy. They're happy they did it. Okay. I, that's the other executional best practice. If you want to make 2019 your best year ever, if you want to blow your park bench site up, get deals on the site and get the review cards. And we'll design them for you. And then we'll send you and that business owner the file for free, all including the service. We'll design those review cards. You and them can go print them out. And remember, um, I found, I got my friend to become a print broker and provide my realtors probably, I think, the best pricing on business cards and manageable. So if you want to get business cards done so that you can give them to the business, they can hand out to people. Okay, uh, Kyle at Creative Marketing. I know some of you have already used him and, and enjoyed his pricing. Um, it's very good for, for print. Okay. So Debbie and John asked, when PB reaches out to the businesses, so we reach out to the businesses via email. And in our email series, we do educate businesses on all the functionality of the website. Okay, so when you put that business up on the website and you interview them, they go on a drip email series that is a whole year long. I'll send Kyle's email in the notes at the end. We send them an email, uh, just like you guys get weekly emails from us. We, we send weekly emails to small businesses and it teaches them how to use all the elements of the website. So we do um, as good of a job as we can and we're always looking to improve. I'm gonna be doing webinars in 2019 for the small business owners um, on the website so you guys can invite them to a webinar and then I can teach them how to use Park Bench and then just do business period on top of that because you want them to be successful because that improves the local economy, which improves housing prices. Okay, so in 2019, one of my major changes, one of my major additions is I'm gonna be doing masterminds and webinars for the business owners in your communities so that you have a reason to follow up with them, you have something of value to give to them, and I can help get more of them to be engaged on the website, which will make them like you more and want to use you and refer you. Okay. All right. Patty, okay. Emailing the questions makes the business owner stressed out. How many questions are you emailing? Um, there's a, there's a script for it. I can totally get that. I can totally imagine if you send too many questions, it can stress them out. But if you give them a sense of, hey, I'm going to ask questions about what you do. I'm going to ask questions about, you know, your needs and your challenges, you know, in your business, your goals and the future of your business. I'm going to ask you questions about you as a person, your hobbies and interests. Um, and, and it'll be about this long, right? So, there, I believe there's an email template where you can give them insight to start thinking about questions, giving them the the general description of what your kind of stuff you're going to ask about, and then maybe three, five, max ten uh, questions. If you send them the entire template, okay, that we have in the back end that's got like 50 questions or something or 100 questions, yeah, that would stress everyone out, me included. Okay. All right, so when it, back to execution, okay? Focus on doing a great interview and putting time and effort into it. Don't take shortcuts. Plant the seed in the middle. Get lots of photos. Get deals. And then leave with an impression of increase, okay? You always want to leave on a high note, a hug, a high five, Okay, a handshake at the very minimum, but you want to you want to start saying like, "Hey, we're friends now, and we're going to follow up again. And let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm going to promote that interview. It'll be done by this day on this time. And whatever day and time you say that you're going to finish the interview by, and you're going to promote it by, and you're going to send them a link so they can promote it, because you want to talk about how they're going to promote it and get more leverage, get some more results for them and for you." 
talk about all that at the end and then leave. Okay, so they're just like, wow, what an amazing experience. Okay, so think about how you're going to leave with an impression of increase. Okay. Next, promotion. Okay, promotion of the interviews. All right. Again, there's there's lots of really detailed training on this, so I just want to go uh, talk about the the main levers. Okay. Yes, promote it on social media, but you've got to leverage the interviewees' network. You've got to talk to them and 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 be like. Hey, so, so when I'm done, I'm going to share this on my social channels, um, and you're going to share it on yours, right? So you've got, you've got to want to plan a seed that they're going to promote it at the interview, and then you're going to want to follow up with an email to say, hey, here's the link so you can share the interview on social media. Um, I've also tagged you in my post. Because all you're doing is you're following up with more value to give. Okay, so make sure you do that step to leverage their network because then you're going to get in front of a whole bunch of people that you don't even know that are local. Okay, and then the final one is you got to make sure um, if you want to get lots of exposure and if you have the budget, okay, social media is getting very crowded. So the idea of spending $5 per interview to boost it. To people in your local area, five, ten bucks doesn't have to be much, but if you just make a commitment of, hey, I'm going to spend five to ten bucks per interview to make sure it gets in front of the people who live and work in my community. Because again, not only is that going to make that other person happier, that I can tell them in my email. Hey, I promoted on my social media and I spent some money to boost it because I want to make sure, you know, you get lots of exposure to the people in the community. And I know that social media is just getting really noisy and organic's not as easy. Okay. Um, but if but if you share it on your social media, then you're bound to get lots of brand exposure. And I'm just lightly putting in there that I've not only spent my time to to help them and promote them, but I've even spent a little bit of money. Okay. And if you're willing to spend money on them, what are they more likely to do with you? Right? This is human nature. Okay? You are truly playing to human psychology. So think of it as an investment in that relationship. Okay? And the final one is those review cards. Okay? So when a business is offering a reward for a review, get tell support, hey, this business is offering a reward for a review. Can I get some business cards? Uh, review cards made for them so that um, I will we'll send the design to you and to them and then you guys can print them out however many you want because when they hand them out okay I got 30,000 hits on my website in my third month and it was because I had a bunch of businesses handing those cards out okay so that was a huge again yeah sure I had to spend some more money on it but it was so worth it it was way more worth it than what I spent on my own business cards. These business cards were way better at getting my brand in front of people because the business owners would be handing them out all the time. And then I was on the side of every page and I got tons of exposure just like you will. Okay, so those are some ideas of how, yes, promote it on your social media, but let's really make an effort be very conscious about how can I make sure I leverage that interviewee's network because they're going to benefit by promoting it too. How, how can I make sure I have a budget for boosting my interviews? And how can I make sure I have a budget for getting review cards made so that I can make sure businesses start handing and, and promoting their profile, making more money off the website, getting more results because of what I've done for them, and then therefore being more likely to refer me business and use me. Again, these are all investments in the relationship that you want to tip over the scale so that you use you and refer you. That's how I always saw it. This is not a marketing spend. This is an investment in a relationship, and I want to build a business on relationships. 
So I have to invest in relationships. And if I'm investing in things that help that relationship out, help that person out in their life or their business, then that relationship is more likely to use me and refer me. Okay. Next. Show me the money. Okay. Um, follow up. I have some questions I want you guys to answer for follow up. Who has done a good, okay, so for those who in your mind you're like, I follow up, I do a good job with follow up, and I have got results because I followed up. Please answer these questions for the group, okay? When did you do your first follow up with an interviewee? I'm a Seinfeld fan. Oh, that was Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> um, when did you do your first follow up with an interviewee, okay? So you interview someone, when was the first time you followed up with that person? Okay, there's a, a time period. When was the first time you followed up with the person you interviewed? Okay, and how often have you or do you follow up? When you think about the people you interview, how often have you or do you follow up with those new relationships? Okay, put, put that in the chat box. I only got to learn a little bit of my friend Teddy. My friend Teddy was like the ultimate Jerry Seinfeld fan. Um, how often have you or do you follow up? Okay. Here's, if you didn't do this in 2018, make sure you do this in 2019. This is going to help you so much. Create leads. Create business for yourself and get more clients. Every single person who likes, comments, and shares, likes, comments, and shares either your post on social media, which when you boost it, more will happen, or the interviewee's post, the, per the inner person you interview, when they shared on social media, those posts, like, comment, and share. Every single person who likes, comments, and shares those posts, DM them. DM them with a thank you. DM them with a, if you have any questions about real estate, do you have any questions about the market? Thank you for shopping local. Thank you for supporting the neighborhood. Thank you for, um, you know, helping this local business get more exposure by engaging on this post. Um, I don't know if you know I'm a local realtor in the area, so if you have any questions about the market, I'm happy to answer for them. I don't know if you know I'm a local realtor in the area. Do you have any questions about the market? Happy to help. Right? It's best if you ask a question and then put happy to help at the end. Do you have any questions about the market? Happy to help. Okay. Every single person, DM. Okay. And you will... Sure, there's a bunch of people that won't respond to you, but you will get a bunch of responses and you will get a bunch more leads and you'll build a bunch more relationships and you'll build a bigger business. Every single person, DM them on social media, okay? My screen, DM, direct message, sorry. Um, so on Facebook, direct message them. On Twitter, direct message them. On Instagram, direct message them. That's what DM means. Apologies. Uh, sorry, Susan. Um, so send a private direct message on social media to every single person who likes, comments, and shares on those posts. Okay? Hey, we, we all know stuff really well. We all don't know stuff really well. I didn't know what a DM was until I learned. No one does. Okay. I've got, I, I know this has gone a little bit long. I know people got to go. Okay. There's three things I want to go over and then do Q&A. One is 
how to prospect everybody in your database, like I said at the beginning. U using Parkbench to, to recall every single person in your database. Even, or if you're brand new to the industry, to leave a really good first impression with people. Number two and three are some advanced marketing campaigns, okay, which is a free blank campaign and a max deals campaign. All right, and then we'll do Q&A, okay? So we're almost wrapping up here. First is the prospecting every single person, okay? In your database, even if you look at that name and you go, oh, that person doesn't live here or that person doesn't work here, that's okay. You can still call them and you go through this tree, okay, of, of questioning, okay? Hey, John, I already, I already know he doesn't live in the area doesn't work in the area. But instead of me calling and doing the traditional follow-up where I talk about friends, family, occupation, just straight up ask, talk about real estate in the market and have, ask them if they have questions or if they know anyone in the market or blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever script you use. Before I do that, before I do that traditional follow-up, I am going to say, hey, John, um, I don't know if you know, but I'm the the sponsor and ambassador of this new local website for this area. Now I don't know, you know, I know you don't live here, and I don't. Maybe there's a business. Maybe you have a business I don't know about, because I'm interviewing cool business owners and professionals who serve this area and who have a business in this area, and I'm featuring them on the website for free. To help them make more money and get more exposure. And you're my friend. So I thought I would just ask you, like, hey, do you want to be interviewed and featured? Do you have a reason to be interviewed and featured? And I'm just I'm just gonna ask because even though I know the majority of the time they're gonna say, no, that's okay, like there's no reason for me to be interviewed. Hey, that a okay. I just wanted to check. You know, because this is something that I'm doing, and I obviously you're my friend, so I want to help you out if I could. So this is what I'm doing that. And what's happening in that relationship? It's building. At least I'm trying to help him. And I'm not prejudging that he can't take my help. Because maybe there's a, something that, maybe it's the new year for him and, or for her, that relationship you have. And maybe they're starting a business that you have no idea about. Okay, so don't prejudge everybody. And that's why you can ask that question. First and foremost, ask them if they want to be interviewed and featured. If they do, Great, book the interview and, and, and end the call. Maybe do some small talk after, but end the call and do more talking when you do the interview. If they don't, if they say no to the interview, they say, hey, that's okay. Um, there's this newsletter that goes out with, uh, about the community with recent news, upcoming events, new deals, properties for sale, the interviews that I am doing, so you can kind of get to know people and the businesses in the community. Do you want to be added to that newsletter? Again, maybe they want to stay up to date with your area. And if they say yes, great. What email do you want me to send it to? And you're going to get that email, even though you may already have it, but you're going to get that email because you're going to get their consent and you're going to put it on Park Bench and you're entered on the side of the page and you're, you're going to subscribe them to the website for them. Okay, do it for them. Because that one little move is going to have them seeing your face week in, week out, over and over and over again as the go-to local real estate expert in your area. Okay? So ask for the interview, number one. Ask for the subscriber, number two. And then you can ask them if they have any questions about the market and continue on with your regular follow-up. But by doing that at the beginning... You're showing people that you're different than every other realtor, that you're trying to help them out, you're trying to give value, you're demonstrating something about your business because they may be like, why are you doing this? This is so interesting. I've never heard realtors doing this before. Then you get into a conversation about that and it really starts developing your brand as someone that's different and you're standing out, you're differentiating and you're showing people that you are the kind of realtor that people want to do business with, um, which is someone who you know, cares about the community um, and actually does the work and puts in the work to help others. Okay, so it's a small little thing, but I find a lot of people aren't 
using their park bench with everybody in their database. And if you want to maximize your relationships and maximize 2019, I recommend you do. All right. Next are the two advanced marketing campaigns. Okay. I will do um, a whole mastermind on this one. Okay. And I've talked about it briefly before in the past. So I won't get too in, in, in depth in this, but I'll briefly mention it now. One is called the free blank campaign, otherwise known as the free coffee campaign or the free chocolate campaign or the free blank campaign. And the other one's the max deals. So the free coffee or free blank campaign goes like this. You go interview a coffee shop, feature them on the website, and then you go back to that coffee shop and say, hey, um, if the person was not offering a reward for a review, I would go back to them and say, hey, I want to help you get more reviews to help you show up higher in the search engines. And I want to help you just get more clients and, and customers to engage and become more loyal and, and stuff like that. And I want to, you know, give you some money. So I want to pre-buy 50 a hundred, pick a number, 50 to a hundred coffees. Okay. I'll pre-buy them. If you want to give me a bulk discount, that'd be awesome. But you know, I'll pay a full price if, if you really want me to. Okay. And I'll, I'll and, and sometimes they'll give you, they usually give you a, a discount. Maybe they'll give you a bunch of, uh, any size of coffee for the price of a small. Um, and you pre-buy the coffees, okay? So you're gonna spend 50, 100, 200 bucks, okay? But here's how well that money gets leveraged. I remember running the math with another realtor who was like, I'm thinking about advertising in this school newspaper or this magazine or this other thing to get brand exposure. Um, you know, and I'm like, I'm like, I got something way better for you. Let's say you spend $100, okay, to get 100 coffees. You only get charged that dollar every single time someone redeems the coupon to get the free coffee. So you pre-buy the coffee, and then we will help that business get their profile set up so it says write a review, get a free coffee, and then we'll create special cards with a coffee symbol on it. Um, so it says, write a review and get a free coffee. Like we'll create specific business cards. We'll design them for you. Write a review, get a free coffee. Then you go print them out. And then you and that business just go flurry the community with these business cards. And not only will it drive a ton of traffic to the website where they see your face where they cruise around the website and see your face even more. They then have to create an account to get the weekly email newsletter. Write a review, do something for the business. And then go redeem the coupon, which statistically 10, 20, 30% of people never do. And some people will go to the website and not even write a review. So you only pay to get 100 people to write a review and redeem the coupon. Then you've got about another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 people who write a review but never redeem the coupon. Then you get another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 or more people who go to the website and see your face who just don't even do it or more. All for the price of a buck, of a hundred. If you want to do research about the cost to acquire a user on a website, the cost to Groupon in their heyday paid $250 to $5 to get a sign up, to get a person just to enter their email to get the Groupon newsletter. And with this functionality, you are able to get engaged active users who get the newsletter every single week, who write reviews, who help the business for cheaper than Groupon, who was the king, the king at getting people to sign up. You have the potential to be better 
than Groupon for your area. And when I did this, there's a reason why I became the number one review site, the number one deal site, the most trafficked site, the one where the most businesses were using it. In the entire internet for my area, my site was number one in every metric. And it was because I kickstarted it with this campaign. Okay, I'll go deeper into the execution of this campaign, but it's a really cool campaign. Hopefully that makes sense. The second uh, campaign that also worked really, really, really well is called the Max Deals Campaign. Okay, so this is where I would get, I would walk, like, like business owners I knew had flyers. Business owners are already flyering people in the community with their deals. And usually they're spending, like it's their own campaign, so they have to spend all the money themselves to get the word out about their deal. So I would walk around the community and I would tell the businesses, hey, do you have any deals you want to offer? I'm going to make a sheet with four, six, eight, 10, 12, however many businesses want to do this. We can all share the cost of the sheet, okay? And then I'm going to distribute it in person and we can drop it off at the condos and apartments and um, I hand them out at houses and put them in the schools and we'll just put them in a whole bunch of places. We'll share the cost, okay? And we'll still get the message out. Like you still get your deal out business owner, whatever promotion you wanna get out there. And we as local businesses and professionals, we're all just gonna work together and co-promote and co-brand and share it and we're gonna make a sheet. And when I would get the deal, I would say to redeem the deal, that deal they put on the sheet would be the deal they have on the website. So to get the deal, you got to go to the website. But the sheet was a really great way of getting the word out because people still like print. And people loved this print more than any print I think in the entire neighborhood, because if you can imagine a, 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 a sheet with four, six, eight, ten deals on it, I and I would have a limited number. The way I did it was I had a limited number. I had twenty five hundred, and I would almost make a social media campaign around it, where I'd get the businesses who were on it and myself to all promote when the sheets would go live, and then everyone would have a picture to share on the social media of uh, of these sheets. And I would tell people that I'm going to be at this corner handing them out. And the second or third time around, once the word got out about these sheets and how cool they were and the, there were great deals on it, um, people would be running to get the sheet because there was a limited number. And so people at the work, I, I would position myself where all the people from the, in the work uh, sections of the neighborhood would come out for lunch. So I'd be out in the community. It's a great chance to meet the people in the community. Okay, so I'm getting to know the people in the community. They're coming to me because I had something of scarce value that had a lot of value on it. And people would, would come at the end and I'd stay around at the corner, even if I was done handing out the sheets. And people were like, do you have any more? I said, no, sorry. And then I would start hearing from people that's, oh, okay, I know someone else in my workplace probably got it. And I'll probably just get like the leftovers, which are still good. Okay. Um, bar visuals. Yes, I apologize. Um, when I go deeper into this, I'll have a total PowerPoint um, to show you guys all this stuff. I apologize. Improvement. Appreciate it. Good feedback. Um, I'll send out images after. Okay. So these sheets, one, my brand was on it. So I was getting brand exposure just like any other print form of marketing. But we all know that most print goes in the trash can. This one doesn't. This one people kept in their backpacks. This one people kept at their desks. They kept in their coffee tables because there were so many deals on it that, you know, hey, I'm going to take the ones that I like. If I don't have a pet and there's a pet deal on it, I'm going to go give it to someone else. And people were sharing this. So not only did I get a lot of brand exposure, not only did I help the business owners make more money and save them money, and so now I'm becoming even better friends with them, but I also got a lot of people to go to the website and sign up to go get the deals. So, um, again, high level realtors have kind of, have kind of done this one before. I know realtors have done, um, 
these something something similar to this before. And now that you have park bench, it's not just a flyer that people just clip off and walk in and use because now you can get them to go from the flyer to the website to sign up to get the newsletter every week and to get the deal and to see all the other deals. Okay. Paula talks about how this is very overwhelming. Hey, we got a whole year, right? We got lots of time. I want to just give you all these ideas and we're going to go deeper into all this stuff in future masterminds. So people, that's not the first time that, that people have said that, um, but that's why I send really good notes, really good instructions after. That's why you can call in, email in for anything that you get, uh, want more clarification on, and we'll go deeper into these topics in the future. Okay, but what I'll do right now is I will open up the chat for questions. Okay, I'll open up uh, for Q&A on anything that you want me to cover or recover that maybe I didn't cover um, that you just want to ask about Park Bench. Okay, Paula asks, what are the top three to five things you like to share about the market in your area? Schools, deals, and events. Okay, schools, deals, and events. To me, those are the three things that people care most about in neighborhoods. Schools, deals, and events. That's the kind of content I want to share a lot of. Okay. Just remember, guys, as we wrap up for today, okay, there's going to be a lot of fears, doubts, and worries that go through your head all throughout the year with Park Bench and with your business. And you just got to remember this. If you're in your head, you're dead. All right? You got to get out of your head. You got to believe that you already know enough to do the stuff. All the stuff that you got to do, you already know enough. And, and everything that you need, you've already got inside of you. All right? Every single person new to real estate, super experienced, young, old, there is not a single kind of person and not a single kind of market that has not been able to do this stuff. All right? All you need to be great at Park Bench and to be great in 2019 is within you and it is in there right now. All you need is within you now. All right. So keep reminding yourself. I want to go after connection, not perfection. Okay. Patricia, could we set up the deals for the businesses too? You do have the functionality to edit business profiles, which includes putting up their deals. But if you want to just send the information to support, go for it. That's what you paid for. That's what they're here for. All right? Use us. Abuse us. All right? The thing that we hate the most is when realtors don't do this. Okay? We love to help you. We love to help communities. We love to help the local businesses. The thing that hurts us the most is when people don't do the work, when people don't do it. Okay, and, and, and fear of failure is a real thing, right? But we just got to keep telling ourselves, do it now. Just do it now. Just do it now. Ooh, there's a person I can go ask to be interviewed. Do it now. Fuck it. All right, go. Right? Like, oh, I, I should follow up with that person. But I'm going to say, just, uh, just pick up the phone and just figure it out along the way. Like, just do it now. Right? Like, just do it now. You cannot fail. All right? It sounds super cheesy. You, can, you cannot fail. You can only learn and grow. I have learned that so much in my life. You cannot fail. You can only learn and grow. There's so many people to interview. Who cares if you mess up once? All right? So just make a plan, work a plan. Make a plan, work a plan. Do spend time to think, but then make sure you can stop thinking. And that helps you get out of your head. If you've done real thinking, if you've done real planning, if you've done real strategy, if you've got your equipment, if you've got your templates all set up, then you can stop thinking, you can start doing, you can get out of your head, and you can just start executing and have faith in yourself. Okay? And when you, when you make your goals, okay, if you don't hit your goal, 
that's okay because what skills did you develop in pursuit of the goal? What progress did you make in pursuit of the goal? What good things did happen in pursuit of the goal? Sometimes a goal is not supposed to be reached. You're just supposed to use a goal to help you become better. Okay. Is there a way to track how many subscribers I have? Yes, log into the back end and you should see that. Okay, log in, go to your control panel and there is a report that will tell you how many subscribers you have, how many claimed businesses you have, how many businesses are in your database. It is all there. How much website traffic analytics, although it's a vanity metric, we still show it to you because we want you to grow everything. Okay, and keep coming on these masterminds. I'm excited for us to have 100 people in one mastermind because all of us here today, the more people we have, the bigger this network gets, the better we're all going to be. We can all look at our peers to, to help us be more successful. You guys should be reaching out to each other to motivate each other, to help each other, to hold each other accountable. Have a buddy in the Park Bench Network. Okay, or two or three, have a monthly meeting with the people in your local area who are doing this with you. Masterminds are regular. They are every Monday, okay, at 11 a.m., same time and place, every week, if, unless there's a Canadian holiday or an American holiday or something like that, or a conference, okay? But every Monday, or else we'll make it up, okay? One more statistic. Remember the statistic. If this does not fire you up, I don't know what will. 40% of leads are generating Q1. 40%. 40% of an entire year's worth of leads are generated in Q1. People have come out of the Christmas break thinking about buying, thinking about selling, thinking about investing. They went home for the holidays. They were around family where they got to have real talk. Where, where they really start to think about what are they going to do to make 2019 their best year ever, and buying a home is a solution to that. Selling a home is a, a solution to that. Investing in real estate is a solution to that. That is why 40% of leads are generated in Q1, because it is fresh on people's minds. So if there's ever a time for you to cut out the crap in your life and to do more, to work more, all right, you can rest a little bit later in the year when you've Put in the work now. Don't think that January is a slow month, okay? It may be a slow month for closed transactions, but it is not a slow month for lead creation and lead generation. So put in a plan in place to make sure you take advantage of Q1 because that will set your year up so that you make 2019 your best year ever, okay? I'm going to do a quick scroll through the chat to see if there's any other questions I didn't answer. Otherwise, I wish you all the very best. I hope you have a fantastic week. I'm excited for 2019. And if you just want to leave everyone with some inspiring words to help your peers get inspired to take more action, all right, leave something in the chat box for your community here and go have yourself a great day. Rachel asked earlier, what did you say the response should be to people you DM who have commented or liked a post? So if someone likes, comments, or shares a post on social media, I'm going to send them a direct private message. And I'm going to say, hey, thank you so much for liking this post or sharing this post or commenting on this post. Um, I, you know, I don't know if you know, I'm, I'm the ambassador of this new local website. It's all about shopping local. So I just love when people are also supporting the neighborhood. So thank you. Um, and, and I don't know if you know, I'm a local realtor in the area. Um, so if you have any questions, I'm happy to help. You know, or I don't know if you know, I'm a local realtor in the area. Do you have any questions? Happy to help. Thank you for whatever you're doing because the mission, the vision is to support local and help these local businesses and to grow the community and create a more cohesive, vibrant community. So thank you. And I don't know if you know I'm a local realtor in the area. Do you have any questions about the market I can answer for you? 
Question mark? I'm happy to help. And you just leave it. Thank you, Meredith. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Debbie and John. Do it now. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Pam. Definitely. Businesses, a lot of businesses were hot in the holidays, and, and now will be a good, quieter time to reach out. All right. Thank you, Patricia. Happy New Year, everyone. Just scrolling through here. I hope my audio and video was good the entire time. Thank you, Sudi. That's awesome. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you for everybody who contributed today. The contribution was awesome. I'm going to have a lot of reading to do and compiling, but I love it. This is great. Really great feedback, Sudi. Let your goals be bigger than your excuses. That's a good one. I like that one. That's a great one, Rachel. Yeah, I watch more Seinfeld. I don't watch too much TV anymore. I did a lot of that. Uh, we had the we had the big briefcase. Me, and my friend, have you ever had the briefcase of all the seasons on DVD? We used to watch all those all the time. It's good to have some good to have some jokes and some banter in here. I'm loving it. All right, guys, I gotta I gotta go. Thank you, everyone. Make it a great week, and I'll see you next week.